What are the divisions of the American Psychological Association and why should you join one? Stay tuned. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy, help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you about the APA's divisions. The American Psychological Association is the professional organization and governing body for psychologists in the United States. It is not to be confused with the American Psychiatric Association, which is a totally different and independent organization, nor should it be confused with Astronaut Pirates Anonymous, which I totally made up. The APA performs a number of important functions. It sets the requirements for and accredits clinical psychology graduate programs. It establishes the ethical guidelines by which psychologists must abide. It serves as a repository of expertise on human behavior to help guide important policy decisions at state and federal levels. And it advocates to lawmakers about all kinds of issues related to psychology, from securing federal funding for psychology education programs to providing guidelines on ethical animal research. The APA does a lot of good for psychologists, but also for the communities they serve. When most people think about psychology, they tend to think of clinicians. However, the APA is broader than you might think, as it represents many different types of psychology. Because the interest areas in psychology are so broad, the APA has sub-organizations within it called divisions. You can think of the APA as similar to the US federal government, whereas divisions are like the states. Or the APA is like the European Union, and the divisions are like member countries. The difference, though, is that I, as a psychologist, can belong to multiple divisions that represent and support my interests. Each division has representation on the APA's Council of Representatives, which is a group that meets at least twice a year to help make important decisions like a legislature. Maybe you're thinking, that's all great, but what can they do for me? Why should I bother? Great question. Advocacy for psychology is valuable for all psychologists, and somebody needs to do it. But that's like take a penny, leave a penny, or reduce, reuse, and recycle, and don't flush baby wipes, or pay your taxes. I can get ahead by skipping out on all of that stuff. The good news is I don't have to care about any of that to enjoy membership in a division. The division is a network of people who share the same interests as me. So it's a great opportunity to connect with and get involved in my interest area. In psychology, we may not be able to find someone with our niche interest nearby, so it's much more important to have a network of expertise that can communicate and get together from time to time. They have grants, scholarships, and awards, and other opportunities that can be advantageous, as well as connecting some of the most established researchers in different fields. Within each division, there is leadership that makes important guidance decisions for your subfield, and many divisions manage academic journals in those specific areas. All divisions provide regular newsletters that highlight important issues and advancements in the field so that you can know how to best handle new issues as they arise. Your division provides you with the tools you need so that you can be a contributing and valuable practitioner in your field. So who can join a division? Well, this varies from division to division, but many divisions have options for affiliate members that don't require joining the APA as a whole. Most divisions have options with reduced membership fees for students, sometimes it's even free, and some offer a first year free. Okay, enough about all of that. Let's take a look at the divisions themselves. There are a lot of them, 54 in total, but that number has fluctuated over the years as divisions have merged and new ones have formed. We can't look at all of them right now, but the good news is they each have their own website, so you can look at the list of divisions on the APA's website at apa.org and select the ones that interest you to learn more. I want to highlight that there are many divisions concerned with clinical practice, such as Division 40, Society for Clinical Neuropsychology, and Division 53, Clinical Child and Adolescent Psychology, but there are also divisions devoted to experimental psychology, such as Division 3, Experimental Psychology and Cognitive Science, and my favorite, Division 6, 
comparative psychology, and behavioral neuroscience. There are divisions focused on specific careers in psychology, such as 16, school psychology, and 19, military psychology. Some divisions are devoted to improving psychology and psychology education, such as Division II, Teaching of Psychology, and Division V, Quantitative and Qualitative Methods, and also Division 29, Advancement of Psychotherapy. Other divisions are focused on how psychology can be used to give back and change the world for the better, like Division 18, Psychologists in the Public Service, and 48, Society for the Study of Peace, conflict, and violence. Many psychologists belong to multiple divisions, and there are so many, it's really hard to choose just one. I encourage you to check out the APA division websites. I'll leave a link in the description below. If this video has been helpful, help us back by hitting the like button. We hope you'll consider subscribing so that you'll stay up to date with all things psychology. And until next time, keep thinking. In case the government is watching, I leave pennies all over town, I recycle all of my baby wipes, and I definitely pay my taxes.